Here's a little baby Fertilands. He's a good eater. He really is. But you give him one and he wants 15. So, how are you, buddy? Actually, you got something in your mouth. These snakes, they're venom. They bite you. Your skin, your flesh, your ligaments, your bones will rot. You know, they'll just fuck you up in the worst way. But Ferdinand is nice with his mouth. And he's not allowed to bite. Would you bite me? Would you bite your daddy? Let's see what kind of mood he's in. What kind of mood he's in? Archer, Archer. Alright. There's my boy. He's a cute little dude. You should look up Ferdelance. F-E-R-D-E. -E, and then Lance. L-A-N-C-E. And check out the bite. Oof, it's just terrible. But Ferdinand, he knows the rules. He knows he comes out every single day. And he falls right into his little routine. He knows I love him. He looks forward to his interaction. I can tell. Maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think so. I think he genuinely enjoys it. You know this little crazy fuckhead, right? He just went for me four times. But... He, should I wish I could say that he's getting better and that he's learning to behave. I wish I could tell you that working with him every day has just been wonderful and that he's come so far. He's a dick and he's not changing anytime soon. If anything, he's the one snake that maybe has gotten worse. You know, he just, he just doesn't like me too much. Don't feel too happy. He doesn't like you either. He doesn't like anybody. But he has a, a special distaste for me. And yet, I can't figure out why I love him. I really can't. It bothers me. I worry about myself sometimes. Look at him. He wants nothing but to bite me right now. You know, that's the look they get. And I try to work with him. I mean, I do every fucking day. See, he just did it. Every fucking day. And all he does is hate me more for it. It works on every snake, mambas, boomslings, cobras, rattlesnakes, but this little bastard, it's like he's the only really, truly dangerous one here, because he wants me dead and he's not playing about it. Oh, fuck, even as I'm speaking, look at that face. Yeah, I see that look. I see that look. He is what he is, you know, dick, but... The thing is, no matter what... And I know I say it too much, no matter what, it has to be a daily process. It also has to be at the right time. You know, I, the way she's acting now, you know, if you look at her head and neck. Hang on a sec. You know, you can see how abrupt her movements are. And so, you wait. <laughs> she's actually literally making a knot of herself. You wait. So you can get to a point of the body that they can't reach. And then you watch. And you will see that they remember the stuff you did the day before. Even though, <laughs> maybe she didn't, but she does. Even though, you know, the movements will at first be like that. There are going to be days, there's going to be days. These are the times, she doesn't act like a cobra sometimes, these are the times when it's most important, you know, so I'll be working with her for quite a bit tonight, and every time she eats, you know, now that we're learning about each other, I know if she gets this way, I'm going to be working with her. <sighs> I left these fucking cookies here, and it, it's bringing flies, I forgot, it was for a mouse. Look at how this little bastard looks almost, like, cute up there. You know, look at him. He almost looks like, like normal. Can't get over that. Here's a Guarico rattlesnake. They are from Venezuela. This guy can be a little feisty, but I love him. His name is Snickers. Snickers, the snake. <laughs> He's a good little dude. He just likes to bite sometimes. That's all. You know, it's, it's not the greatest habit, but we're working on it. We're working on it. We're getting there. 
Plus, he's cute. Look, he's cute. He is. All right, thank you for. All right, real quick. Little baby Ferdinand. He's a good little dude. His name is Ferdinand after the bull who refused to bullfight because he was just too nice. He's got something in his mouth. I got to take it out now. But just checking in with my man, Ferdinand, the Ferdinand. What did you eat, buddy? All right, let me get this out of his mouth. Uh, we'll be back in a second. Look at that. See how it's helping her shit? You see? It's very helpful. Nice warm water. And some of this here cream. You know, for dry skin, which is what shed is, at least in many ways. And doesn't she seem to enjoy it? You know, she's not going nuts to get out. And I could swear she knows it's good for her. So, I'll leave her here for a bit. See how using the water can be helpful? And I move her back, she can't do anything. Don't get it twisted, man. This girl's a bitey girl. You know, it's just that uh, we work on it a lot and she calms down each session. And look how nicely she's shedding the water. She's a good girl. She's doing a good job. <laughs> she wants to come out I'm not letting her <laughs> she suddenly keeps trying to shoot over the top and I have to grab her and put her back oh man I love this girl so much she's a sweetie but properly put you know she becomes a sweetie when she first comes out you know I'm telling you you know, don't get a baby spectacle thinking you're gonna get off easy. I'm telling you, they'll 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 bite. You know, you know she she'll bite you. She'll bite me. But then after working with her for the first five ten minutes, she calms down a lot, and that's when I start to show these videos. I don't like to take videos when I first do it because I can't hold the camera, which is all nuts, you know. But please believe me, I, I just don't want people to get you know monocles and spectacles expecting them to be super tame. That's on you. All right, you know, please understand why I'm saying that and work with them, at least in my opinion. I would say work with them every single day for a minimum of 20 minutes in your hands. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to do free handling, that's fine. Then in the hook for 20 minutes every single day, it'll pay off so much. If you don't believe me, just try it for a couple of weeks. Watch what happens if you stop for two days. You know, you'll see, you're gonna lose more than two days, it's gonna regress them. They're gonna go back like, you know, like a week. You know, try it and see. Don't don't believe me. It should be based on your evidence. In any case, really appreciate you watching my beautiful girl. And she does too. How'd you make out, Larry? Larry, how'd you make out? Was it good? Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Good. You want more? You want more? Well, there's no more. You already had two. Sorry, buddy. Just checking. I was taking a pause. Sorry, you can't have any more. Talk later. Let me see if I just want to see if she calms down. This is, I need you to. Okay. Well, in, in this posture, she might react. But what you want to do is go so slow, so slow, and listen to them. When you're coming closer, if they huff, they puff, if they hiss, just stop. All right? And listen. It becomes a conversation. And then. There will come a point when you can hold them with no reaction at all. So, you know, I did get a little reaction. Of course, you know, I didn't let her calm down enough. I wanted just to show you guys. But you get the idea. Go really slow. And remember, it's a conversation. When she tells you, like, when they do that hissing, the fake biting, the headbutting, all that stuff, then stop and wait. 
they don't care how close you get. They care how fast you go. If you go fast, they're not going to like it. So you go as slow as you can. And you watch them. When you see any discomfort, you just stop. Very slow. Slower than you want to go. And then you can do it with no reaction at all. Just like something very natural to them. Because it can be. Right. I hope that's helpful to somebody. Okay. Alright. So she's been soaking. But I put on this cream. For dry skin. And soaking then with her rock that she could rub against. Which has helped a lot. Right. She goes in there. Rubs on the inside. Rubs on the outside. And now let's take a look at my girl. Look how pretty. Now, she still has plenty to go, but one of the advantages to being cool with your snake is that they like when you take their shit off. It's funny when you have like a giant berm or a retic or whatever, see? And, you know, they hate the world. And sometimes they'll hate you. See that? But then when you help them, you fell in the water. You fell in the water in the kiddie pool. When you help them with their stuck shed, suddenly all bets are off on your buddies, right? Same here. Sorry. You see, with the cream, since I do free handle her, this is for a snake that's tame. You know, you put it on you, instead of trying to put it on them, put it on you. And <laughs> I just tried it, so disgusting. All right, you put it on you, like this, and then you hold her, like this, and then you. <laughs> Then you switch hands like that, and you get a snake filled with moisturizer like this. <laughs> she doesn't like it too much. You don't like it too much, I know, but it's good for you. It's good for you. See, it's like all over her. You know, that's how you do it. I'll show you how to do it ahead. That's always fun. Come here, crazy. I know. I know. It's a new sensation. It's a new sensation. Alright. Ah. Looks good. Look at this. What I do for the head, I I'll just make another video. The head is a whole thing. You know, the neck is an important part too, by the way. When it comes to stuck shed, the neck is maybe the most overlooked and the most important part. You know, the tail, the neck, and the head. The head is the only part where you can sort of go against their scales. You want to sort of... I add the rock. So now she's nice and silky. So she can rub against the rock. And then I'm going to use the pillowcase with the cream. I showed you the cream before. It's for dry skin, for pacema, this stuff. Could be any brand. And, um... <laughs> And I'll show you how to take it off. But look, just by the bath, a lot's been coming off. She's such a sweet snake. You know, she can be, trust me, she can be pretty defensive. You know, and she does bite. People so get the wrong idea. They think that when she's a baby, she doesn't bite. It's just not true. It's just that I work with her every day, and I feel a bad saying that because I feel so arrogant. But. I want people to know the truth, which is that if you just get a baby monocle or a spectacle or whatever, just by virtue of being a baby, that's not going to afford you any protection. You have to work with them every single day, you know, especially on the bad days, yours and theirs. And it's just as much about you as it is about them. It's going to make you calm. Do you ever notice the back of her head has a smiley face? Look at the back of her head. <laughs> that's me. Look at the back of her head. A little smiley face, you see. But it's as much for you as it is for them. And if it keeps you calm, well, 
they're going to reflect that right back to you. But just as a human being, if you take off a day, or let's say... Oh, there she is. Good girl. You look like a cobra a little bit. She's wonderful. And her dad loves her. A lot of people think that because they see me working with speckles, that it's a good idea to get a baby spectacle. Well, I'm sure there's truth to that somewhere, but the thing is, I sound like an arrogant prick, but I'm gonna say it, you know, it really depends on the keeper, it depends on you. She's not like this because she came like that. She came pretty feisty, you know? And it took a lot of work on a daily basis. You know, she's not necessarily as chill as you might think. You know, there are times when she really needs to chill out. And, you know, look, she's putting up now. You know, and, and did you eat, by the way? Did you eat, honey? And she ate. So you know how they are after they eat. Sometimes they want more. And they get a little food aggressive. A little bit. But, you know, you could see at this age... They, they bite, you know, they, they don't always bite when they're babies, sometimes they do, but they will, and it's not always in an exact time after a second or a third shed, you don't know when that time will be, so think about that, they're not going to tell you I bite now, so how would you find that out? Alright, and any alright, guess who, it is Precious the Boom Slang, who's coming out to say hi, and she's just chilling. She's just a sweet, sweet girl, and I love her to death, and she loves coming out. You know, she's got to stretch her legs, and we talk. We actually watched Anaconda together. She didn't really pay attention, but we watched it together. Well, I watched it, and you were sort of just there. So, she has a mouse in her. The way they eat is just terrible. If they were to bite you, you'd bleed from every hole in your body, including your eyeballs. And so when they bite the mouse, oh, you can see it's just bleeding everywhere. It's just terrible. But... You know, that's what it is. So, for a person, it's probably not particularly pleasant to get bitten. And especially for a mouse, I'm sure it's not particularly pleasant. But, you know, that doesn't mean that she's more likely to bite or anything. Anyway, I gotta put her out. Larry, you're up, buddy. It's precious, you're going back. Right. It's hard for her to move. You know, by any conventional standard, I should really be getting bit. Because my hands stink like mouse and rat and... There's a live one behind me and a dead one next to me. But I have noticed that that's bullshit. And people who get bit because they have the scent of a mouse or a rat or some rodent on them, whatever it is, they realize it later and say, ah, I was messing around with that mouse and I forgot. How do you know that's why you got bit? I mean, how do you really know? No, you don't, right? But what if you remembered while you're working with the snake and suddenly you got nervous, you know? Might they not reflect that back to you? And then wouldn't you go on to consider that conventional wisdom wisdom? I'm sure that the majority of modern science, medical science, I'm sure that most of it is rooted in legitimate research and empirical study, you know, the theoretical side and the pragmatic one. But what I'm not sure about are the ideas that often are not based on anything but people's opinions that they pass on to other people now to their opinions too. That, you know, they'll sense the smell of a rat on you, not be able to distinguish it from you. Well, I've been doing that for a long time, never had a problem. Not saying to do it, and why tell someone? Okay, little baby. This is my little baby. He's a zab can. Rattlesnake, he's a zap can, not a zap can't. And look at that face. I love this guy. Ugh. It's just hot in here. You know, you gotta keep the ambient temperature up. And, you know, 78 to 82 is good. Then they each have their own sort of lamps and humidity and so on. But he's better now. We had some little issues with him. But he ate. He's doing well. He's back to his regular schedule. Right? Just a little shake. That's what I was worried about. I almost like with the spider and ball pythons. I think he's okay now. Sometimes shit just happens that we're never going to know the answer to. But I did a lot of research. I took some measures. It seems to have worked. Despite that little tiny wiggle. 
All right, he's a good boy. He says thank you. You know, you're handsome. I love him. Look at him. What's not to love, you know? Again, as I always say, if you're going to handle snakes with your hands, do it every day. It's cumulative. It's not like, say, getting attacked by a shark when you swim in the ocean every day. You do that every day, the probability of getting bit goes up. You're not working with the sharks. But since there are behavioral changes that you get by working with these guys, the, the probability of getting bit goes down quite a bit. I mean, look, I stink like mouse right now. I have mouse all over my hands. And there's dead mice here. Behind me is a live one. And Larry's is a dead one. But it doesn't matter. You know, I have very different beliefs than most people. Because I don't buy into conventional wisdom. I don't buy into things that I haven't, I don't have evidence for. You know, I've never had evidence that they're heat-seeking and not heat-sensing. Not miss a day. You just modify your training like you would if you were hurt doing a sport. You just train through it, you know. There can never be a day off. The way I do it, in my opinion. Day off will set you back, you know, a week easily. If you don't believe me, handle a snake freehand with every day for two weeks. Then take two days off. I watch what happens. You're going to have a whole different behavior on your hands to deal with. You know, but touching them on the hook is always a good start. Watching their reactions like I'm fucking around with now. And then when they come in your direction, don't be scared. But, you know, watch carefully and move your hand away. If it's coming in a way that you know is not to bite you, just, you know... You have to have that experience. You have to have had enough experience with non-venomous to know when a snake is going to bite. Right? But then there are times when it's the opposite and they're really not going to bite and it's time. And you have to just do it. You know, if you're going to do it, it's going to come a point where you have to just do it. But you want to first make sure he's okay on the hook. And then you start replacing part of the hook with your hand and you see how he reacts like that. Right? You just watch when they do come towards you, how are they doing?